this episode of Alt Shift, I've traveled from Colorado to a state known for three things. It's bears, it's moose, and it's igloos. So I've come to Alaska to review this, the 2015 Subaru Forester 2.5i Touring. It comes with some pretty sweet wheels, a panoramic sunroof, and an off-road function called X-Mode, and much more. We're gonna have to take it on a road trip to find out what else it's got. Ah oh yes, Alaska. Luckily, I've spent 20 years of my life here, so I sorta of know my way around. Our road trip will consist of a 300-mile journey from Anchorage to Valdez. Early in the morning, my co-driver Amy and I set off. All right, we're at zero hour of the road trip. We filled up with gas. Everything for the miles per gallon has been reset, so we are good to go. This six-hour drive on Alaska Highways 1 and 4 are a mix of mountainous switchbacks and long, boring tundra. The perfect drive to test the miles per gallon, comfort, and ability on Alaskan roads. On the first part of the trip, my obsession with places to store beverages was apparent. Alright, hour one, and so far so good. The thing I like about this the most is the amount of cup holders. There's two here, so we got some Red Bulls right there, and then there's one over here on the Mountain Dews residing. That's pretty sweet. This part of the trip also displayed my inability to call the sunroof by its correct term, moonroof. And then this, the panoramic sunroof, is uh, really helpful to keep you awake. At hour two, I decided to check out the cargo area. There's two things I really like about the trunk here are the one-touch fold-down rear seats. So you just push this button, bam, bam. So now you got room for groceries, whatever else, a body, whatever you need to throw in there. The other cool thing is this thing. I've never used it. I don't know anybody who does. So instead of just taking this out and throwing it inside your garage, simply take it out. Not gonna just throw it in your garage, you're gonna throw it in here. Just like that. See where thought ahead. At hour three, we blasted the eight speaker Harman Kardon stereo. Since I can't use copyrighted music on this show, let's just say we were listening to that white rapper from Seattle. I'm no audiophile, but the sound was pretty good. At hour four, we met up with a slow moving recreational vehicle. The 170 horsepower 2.5 liter boxer was up to the task while passing at lower speeds, but anything over 55 was pretty sluggish. Thankfully, Subaru has the same touring model in a 250 horsepower turbocharged 2 liter. The 2.5 liter isn't a deal breaker, but certainly makes you want to spend the extra on the turbo version. Hour 5 got us mastering the dual automatic climate control. I also found the 10 way adjustable driver's seat to be nearly perfect. Near our destination in hour 6, I tested out X mode, the Forester's off road cheat button. X mode works by distributing torque evenly, and if a wheel starts to slip, power is transferred to the ones that aren't. I found the brake assist and hill descent control to be helpful, but somewhat unnecessary for the better than average driver. Subaru built a contraption that displays exactly what X-Mode can do with this spinny roller thingy. X-Mode is peace of mind for the average Joe stuck in a tough driving situation, and is a helpful tool for the more experienced driver. After killing about 3,523 bugs, our trip was at an end. We averaged around 29.8 miles per gallon, nearly perfectly aligned with the 32 highway and 24 cities Subaru boasts. The Forester was absolutely comfortable, handled the roads nicely, and got us there with a decent fuel economy. Six hours on the road has got me wondering, why is it called a Forester? Am I supposed to haul wood with it? It's time for Alt Shift's Less Than 30 Second Car History. The Forester was first introduced in 1995 at the Tokyo Motor Show as a streaky concept and was brought to the U.S. in 1998, becoming one of the first crossover SUVs in the world. The Forester was designed to be a best of both world vehicle, fusing benefits of both SUVs and passenger cars. Since the 1998 model, there have been four generations, each generation getting upgrades for both safety, performance, and eco-friendliness. The newest model integrates Subaru's eyesight system, but it doesn't work very well in Alaska because the lane markers never seem to stick around for more than a month. <sighs> that was Alt Shift's less than 30 second car history. Alright, let's give it a score. Exterior style is much, much better than previous version Foresters. The 18-inch wheels are a huge improvement over the base model as well. 7 out of 10. Interior design gets the same mark. The panoramic moonroof, leather seats, and easily accessible buttons were great. The slide and center console is a little too small for two people and eventually got irritating. 7 out of 10. Geeky Electronics gets a good score. The Harman Kardon stereo, multifunction display, and backup camera were all pluses. No GPS or Subaru eyesight in this model were the minuses. 7 out of 10. 
Not much racing to be done with the 2.5i Forester. However, the turbocharged 2 liter version might be a fun rallycross vehicle. And a 3 out of 10. Years ago, the opposite sex factor on the Forester would have been in the basement, but with the redesign in 2014, it's not doing too bad. 6.5 out of 10. Now for the Alaskan challenges. So in order to properly test this thing, we need to wear something that the locals would wear. Something like this. Now we can properly test this car. I've got on mushing boots, a full snowsuit onesie, some gigantic mittens, a hat that's super cool, and a face mask. Now we can go do it. So the first test is we're gonna have to actually drive it like this. And I have gigantic mittens on and gigantic boots. So this is gonna be interesting. First, I gotta put my seatbelt on. Oh, jeez. Haha, <laughs> I did it. We're gonna hit drive. Look the other way for traffic and hope that my boots don't hit. Uh, I just hit the wipers. All right, no cars, no cars. And we're on our way. So far, so good. Now the question is, can I hit the brake without hitting the gas? Yep. I can still feel the steering wheel and everything else while driving this in a full snowsuit. Hello, sir. Just driving with the full snowsuit on. So I think this thing definitely gets a pass in this category. Our next test involves something that all Alaskans hate to talk about, but need to know when buying a vehicle. So the next thing I need to test is the bear run factor. How quickly can I get to that car and into safety before a bear eats me? It's about 15 yards. Let's see how quickly I can do it. This model Forester comes with keyless access. If the key fob is in your pocket, the door will unlock as soon as you touch it. Perfect for escaping grizzly bears. Now we're going to see what the 0 to 45 time is in full Alaskan gear. And let's hit it. 20, 30, 40, 45. Bam. All right, we'll see what time that was. And we'll try it again without this stuff on me. And I need to get this stuff off me soon because I am sweating about a gallon. So I'm going to have to get a Gatorade as soon as possible. I'm going to turn around here and we're going to do it again. All right, now we're back and in regular clothes. And I got to tell you, that was hot as hell. So let's do the zero to 45 time again. All right, zero to 45 in regular clothes. Let's see what the, uh, what the Forester can do. Off we go, 20, 30, 40, 45. Now let's see what the numbers look like on both. In full Alaskan gear, the Forester managed a zero to 45 time of eight seconds flat. In regular gear, 7.5 seconds. Considering the boots were about a foot wide, that's not too bad. The 2015 Subaru Forester 2.5i Touring receives a 30.5 out of 50 in a resounding pass in the Alaska category. It also just barely edges out a half point advantage over the 2014 Subaru Crosstrek. Our test of the 2015 Subaru Forester covered nearly a thousand miles. We saw moose, glaciers, and waterfalls, and the crossover SUV that enthusiasts lovingly call a Fozzie did exceptional. The 2.5i Touring might have some competition from the likes of the Toyota RAV4 and the Mazda CX-5. However, the added 80 horsepower on the 2.0 XT model turns this good SUV into a great SUV. If you're in the market for a crossover SUV, I'd definitely include the Forester 2.5i Touring on your list, but if you have a little wiggle room in your budget, check out the 2.0 XT Touring. It may just be the best bang for your buck crossover SUV money can buy. Thanks to Continental Subaru and Anchorage for lending me the Forester. Check out their Facebook and their website at continental-subaru.com. Also check out Alt Shift and Nassiok on Facebook as well. If you have a car that you'd like to see me test, let me know in the comments. As always, drive safe. Maybe in the next episode I'll drop this Texas accent. Alright, we're good. I'll stop up here and you can get out. By the way, Amy is hiding in the back right now. She's uh, back there, my little camera girl, hanging out in the back, uh, doing everything she can for Alt Shift. Thank you, Amy. All right, come on out. Yeah, you gotta let me out. All right. Woohoo!
off you go. Letting you out of jail. I'm free! Yay!